Hi everyone, I welcome you all in tutorial 8 of my eTabs software training series. In this tutorial, we will analyze the model and also interpret the results. So let's begin. Before we go for analysis, we will give fixed support condition to the structure. To do so, go to assign menu. First, we have to switch the structure into the plan mode. From, from plan mode, click on base. Select all the joints, go to assign, select joint and from here you have to select restraints. As our base is always fixed in the ground so we will choose this icon. In order to make pin support to your support conditions you can click on this icon. Similarly for roller support you have to go to click this icon and you can also select your support conditions manually according to the degree of freedom which you want to restrict. For our case we just want to click fix support. So click on this icon and hit apply. Switch to the 3D menu. As you can see our support icon changes from pen support to fix support. In order to analyze the structure go and click this button or you can also press F5 from your keyboard or you can also analyze your model by clicking the analyze option and then click run analysis but normally we go and click this play button for the analysis of the structure so click so here you will see within fraction of seconds our model will be analyzed if we have gone for hand calculation or manual calculation it would have taken days to analyze such a structure so this is the real power of software and that's why we use the structural design software in order to reduce the time and get the accuracy in our, our analysis and yes our analysis is complete so to check how our structure is displaced let's go and click show deformed shape by clicking this icon or you can also press F6 from keyboard button click on this icon so from here we choose a load pattern or a special load combination which we have defined in order to see the displacement of a structure for a particular load pattern or combination if you want to see how our displacement is occurring on dead load case so go and click dead load from here you must click wire shadow so we can see how much our structure is displaced from original position and click ok so as you can see our structure is displaced downwards under the action of dead load which is what should have happened similar should be the case for live load but the deformation should be less because our live load is much less than the dead load which we have applied go and click apply and yes so must click wire shadow in this way you will be able to know how much our structure is displaced from original position if you want to check the displacement you can move your cursor along the joints so in this way you will be able to know how much your structure is displaced so for eq x direction our structure should deflect in positive x direction so let's see whether it is happening or not click eq x and then hit apply button and yes our structure is displacing on positive x direction go to plan mode and yes this is what should have happened on bottom story the displacement should be lower and the top story the displacement should be higher similarly for eq y direction 
our structure should have displaced on rear side of the building so select EQY and hit apply button and yes the structure is deflecting on the rear side of the building similarly for wind X it should displace on positive X direction and for Y it should have displaced on negative Y direction because we have applied wind load from this direction so that means whatever the load pattern we have applied over the structure is displaced displacing accordingly so this shows that our load uh, applied on the structures are correct if you want to switch it to the undeformed shape go and click this option Now the most important point in our analysis is to see bending moment, shear force and axial force diagram. So for this you have to click this icon. <coughs> so once you click this icon you will come across with lot of uh, force components. And let me tell you which component to choose and which components are important in our design. So for this I will explain these components from the diagram. So in our design, we give importance to V2, shear and V2 direction. Similarly, moment in M3 direction, we will importance to torsion <coughs> and axial force. So let me show you from this diagram how the force behaves. For axial force, that means the force along this plane or along this Z axis along the length of beam so it should be it could be in beams as well as in columns but it should be along the length of the beam similarly shear v2 shear 2 2 means shear along two plane this u2 direction similarly and this is considered the major shear force in our design so we will take great importance to shear 2 2 similarly shear 3 3 that means shear in this direction and this is considered as minor shear force and it will give less importance uh, in our design and for moment 2 2 now you have to push the axis for m2 2 now the axis will be in u3 direction so this is considered as minor moment so this will deflect our beam in this way in this way for m3 this is the moment in u2 direction and this is going to deflect our beam in this direction so this will be considered as major moment and we will give great importance to this uh, moment and for torsion that is the twisting effect twisting effect along u7 or u4 so again we will give importance to the torsion as well so for dead load let's see click apply if, and you must click show values at controlling station and this way it will give you the maximum values of bending moment along the beam so click apply so we click shear force so our shear force is behaving linearly as we know that shear force at the support is maximum so that means our structure is uh, behaving correctly in order to see the moment diagram click M33 and hit apply once you hit apply you will see the bending moment will be maximum at the mid and you will see hogging bending moment at the supports and that means you have to provide an extra reinforcement at the top of the beam so in this way you have to go for the analysis in order to see in EQX direction that means our moment diagram should behave linearly in X direction so let's see whether it is happening or not click apply and yes so the bending moment is behaving moving linearly along the beams similarly for Y direction click apply and yes for axial force 
so go and click axial force and then hit apply so as you can see let me switch it to the elevation mode so from here you can see the tension force and the compression force so these two columns are under tension uh, when the earthquake is applied in y direction and these two columns are in compression and at the top story the axial force is less and at the bottom story the force is high because of the bottom story so first major uh, load Similarly, if you click dead load, you can also see from the dead load uh, pattern, our top story is experiencing less loads. The bottom story is experience, experiencing high load because all the, all the load coming from top story needs to be bear by our, uh, the bottom story column. So that means the model is behaving perfectly fine and click ok now let me show you how to see the reactions in order to know the reactions you have to click this icon display support spring reaction we want reaction in FZ direction and we will give all the importance to the turning facts uh, moments and also click tabulated from this icon so click apply so once we go for the designing the foundation we will be needing all these values so this is for example so this column is going to resist 58.692 uh, pounds kips sorry 58.692 kips of the load which is coming from all the stories similarly this column is experiencing 68.979 kips of the load coming from the upper stories so in this way we have to go and interpret the results so in order to see the story response plots so we will go to the display menu and from here we will choose the story response plots so this will show us how much our story is displaced under various load conditions so mostly we will see our story displacement in EQX so from here you can see the maximum story displacement is 0 0.36215 inches in X direction similarly for EQY it is 3, 0 0.3632 same in both the direction so how to check whether it is within the limits which is suggested by codes so in order to check the limits if you are using American code so you have to multiply so here the allowable story drifts are given based on the structure type and this category for example I am taking this value 0 0.025 so 0 0.025 multiply by story height for example I am considering 24 feet I am not considering the base part of the structure in order to convert 24 feet I will multiply it by 12 so I am getting 7.2 inches is the maximum story displacement from code and in this case we are only getting 0 0.36 that means we are within the allowable limits which are suggested by codes and if you are using IS code so in this uh, IS code this we have to multiply story height with 0 0.004 so this will give you the maximum allowable story displacement suggested from the codes in order to see the other parameters you have to go to the display menu and click show tables from here you click analysis results and in this way you have, you can find many parameters as per your requirement for example in order to see the base reaction just click base reaction and from here you select the load pattern and click OK 
so this will generate the base reaction according to the load conditions you have defined so in my next video we will design this structure and I will show you how to verify whether our design is economical or not if it is not so how to make our structure economical so guys this brings to the end of today's tutorial if you find this tutorial useful please do like and share and if you have any doubt you can comment in comment section for upcoming tutorial videos please do subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so as you can be notified on my next uploads thank you and have a nice day